Hello everyone and welcome back to the Red Path. It's another episode of the Skull Takers today and we have the wonderful Jamie and Brian both from the Red Path with us here today to talk about the wonderful Arch City GT that they both attended in the last week or so. Um, both of these fine gents brought the world leaders as is to be expected from members of the Red Path and both of them had quite good records both ending the event positive uh, Brian ending the event as best overall, unfortunately not winning this GT, so this will be Brian's last appearance on the channel, but we'll still do some takeaways before he goes away. But anyway, uh, guys, it's really cool actually to have the three of us here chatting, talking about world leaders again. I feel like it's been a minute, um, we've all been, been pretty busy, but it's nice to be back. And in this week after the WTC, there's probably a lot of competitive people looking for content to consume, so... What better time than ever to talk about some competitive world leaders? How are you guys doing today? Um, I'm terrible. Thank you. Oh. How are you, bro? Yeah, I just had to spend <laughs> two days with this guy. So, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing uh, I'm doing awful now. <laughs> um, I'm tired. I wish I never went. It was awful. Jamie was just being the worst. Um, but in all seriousness, no, though, it was nice to get to see Jamie again. I mean... When was Dayton the last time we talked? Yeah, was team like team January? Team. Like, was it snow on the ground? It was cold out. God, was it back all the way back then? I think so. Yeah. So it's been a while since Jamie and I've wow. been to a tournament together. I yeah. don't, maybe I'm just pulling out that out from nowhere, but um, yeah, no, I'm feeling good. I'm all rested up. I'm youthful. I'm happy. It was a good yeah, tournament. Your face it was April. Like, uh... It was April. April. Okay, yeah. it's not that. It's like four months ago. Oh, right? okay. That's like January, basically. So. I haven't yeah, seen okay. Jamie since LGT, so you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, no, I, I was, I, I did have it. It was a great time, great event. It was good to see Brian again, and uh, yeah, a bunch of my local guys were up there as well. So yeah, it was a good time. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. And like, this was a GT that was not really on the schedule for either Jamie or me. Like, yeah. um, I think I messaged him like a month ago, maybe less than that. Like, yeah, like two, two weeks. Two weeks ago, I was like, "Hey, I don't know." Like he he was mentioning that he wanted to get back into GTs and stuff, and I was like, "Hey, have you seen Arch City?" And he's like, "Oh, it's sold out." I'm like, no, actually, there's one ticket left, and Jamie snagged the ticket before I could like say anything else, and I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> Just but, like I yoink. Think there, were, there, <laughs> and, there were three dots on, on the Discord <laughs> chat, and I was like, "Because I I I tried to buy tickets a while ago or a ticket a while ago, but it's because it sold out really quick." And um, I was like, well, shit, that one's gone. And then they did a waiting list, and I was like... Yeah, I, mean, oh, I wasn't I wasn't registered for the event. And I was like, hey, did you see there's a spot open? And he just yoinked, and he's like, yeah, I still get it. And I was like, well, thanks. There was. <laughs> and then, because I wasn't going to go unless I had... If Jamie was there... Yeah. Fortunately, this is a local GT for Jamie, so obviously I was going to give him priority. But turns out another ticket opened up, like, five days before. And I was like, oh, sweet. So Jamie and I got to go yeah. roll some dice together. And that was awesome. So nice. it was unexpected, but pleasant. And it's like the first of many events in your uh, lead up, right, Brian? You've got a pretty packed schedule ahead of you in the next uh, next couple of months or so. RTT this weekend, GT the weekend after that, break, GT, break, break, GT, break, Worlds, I think is the schedule. So going to have a lot of content coming out of Brian, which is great because wow. I'm super busy. So, <laughs> And I'm doing dumb stuff and it's working, guys. Yep. Uh, but yeah, awesome to like, you know, see you guys going out, hanging out together, going to a GT. Obviously, Jamie kind of getting, I suppose you're kind of like getting a little bit back into the vibe, right? I mean, you've hit a lot of of events in the in the last couple of months. Yeah, um, uh, it, mostly RTTs. It, it's good. It's good getting back. Um, and it's nice to just go and see all the guys again, see Brian again and um, a couple so, so this Arch GT was in Columbus. My normal area is Dayton, which is like the western part of Ohio. Columbus is central, and I'm like sort of at the bottom of a triangle between both of them. Dayton's um, 40k scene took off, like basically at the start of eighth, and then obviously COVID, and then after eight, just skyrocketed. Um, and then Scott, who was the TO for this one, well, one of the TOs for for this, he started off a little something in Columbus. But then COVID hit and, and it kind of moved to the other side of Columbus, which was just too far for me to bother traveling to. But he does do the Arch GT. This is the third one. And yeah, like Scott's a great guy. He's a great TO. They got a good team up there. 
um, and they put on a really good event. And I will shout out, um, it was kind of like the soft opening for the venue, which is Warp Gate, like gaming store. Beautiful venue. Very like, beautiful. Oh my God, like that brand was, new, of course. That was the nicest LGS I've been in in a while. Yeah. Like, so it's, I'm not sure of the square footage, but they've got a stream room. They've got like a dedicated normal 40K room at the back. And then the main store body was opened up for the GT. Um, pristine, gr- amazing selection of gaming stuff. Like obviously, it's not just 40K. They're going to do magic and everything else. But um, they got what there was scheduled for 62. And I think 60 actually showed up on the on the day. And it was comfortable. It, I mean, it was you know, you're in a 60 man in an LGS. But that's pushing the boundaries. But it was yeah. it was fine. Only was, really bumping in people in the back, but just yeah. a little bit, and that's because there were viewers, really, like people, yes. spectators, and that was it. Like yeah. it was very spacious. It was. Is it a forty k event if you don't got some nuts about going on? Exactly, you know, that's what I would say. It was, was frigid in there, though. Like I was. Oh, shut up! It was perfect. Oh, my, <laughs> it my, was perfect. My my skinny little butt is sensitive to those temperature changes, Jamie. Put some meat on your bones. I mean, stop complaining and do something about it. <laughs> no, anyway, I I, and I, I did have moderator in like a couple sort of thing right now, but yeah, I I guess will, um, <laughs> I'll probably talk about this a bit later on. But I just want to briefly mention I played uh, Steve, who was the owner um, of game four. We played so the first game on day two, and um, he had an amazing Chaos Knights. I'm like, well, I should have photos, but um, he was the owner. I didn't realize we was just chatting, and uh, he mentioned I was like, like this place fire so if anyone is in the central ohio or just visiting or whatever check out the warp gate um let's see if i can quickly tell you the address uh 4499 kenny road in columbus ohio it great store please and go and support they them. did have a stream for the gt uh yeah. neither of us made it onto stream they were kind of picking the matchups they thought that would be most fun not necessarily doing top table uh still i I haven't seen their stream, but the guys, I'm assuming it's really good because everything else about the place is great. They even closed the venue for us too. Like they closed yeah. the store so they could serve alcohol inside the store. Awesome. Um, and also they brought food in for us. It was, oh, yeah. you couldn't ask for more. Yeah. It sounds like a five star event. It, it, honest, I'll, I'll, if Best GT I've ever been to yeah. in terms of like, they're going to be doing RTTs there. So that'll be another, another area for me to get to. Um, awesome. which, which is great. Yeah, any GT I see at that place, I'm there. So, yeah. and it's within my comfortable four hour drive ish, five, four or five hours. So, like, fucking Americans, man. And <laughs> that's not that far. Oh my god. Okay. Like, okay. I mean, I'd... what about the? Let's briefly talk about the hotel, Brian, before we get into. Ooh. Yeah, be, because let, let me add some context, <sighs> and then I'll hand over to you. Sorry, Darren. I'm, I'm just the context. Hey, so hey, you're gonna please. start. So, of course, like Brian said, he messaged me about this event and I snagged a ticket. Then when I found out he'd got a ticket earlier in the week, I was like, okay, where are you guys staying? Because I hadn't bothered picking a hotel yet. Because there was always a chance I'd have to cancel at the last minute if work exploded or something, but it didn't. So, Brian sends me, um, a, you know, the hotel, a picture of the hotel and that. And I'm like immediately skeptical. Like the, the snapshot has like 2.2 stars. It's $80 a night. And I'm like, I mean, I, look, I, I believe in saving money where you can. Man, you got ripped off. We were 60 bucks a night. Well, okay. But um, I, I, you know, if, if I'm going away for a night or two, two nights, I'm, I'm going to, you know. In my defense, I did not book the hotel. It was my teammate who I randomly figured out was going as well. Booked the hotel because it had like a four and a half star rating on this booking website, which was their own website that they rated themselves on or something. Like, so it was a scale of four to five stars. And we walk in uh, Friday night and the first words we hear are roaches. And the guy at the front desk goes, oh, everybody has that complaint. That's nothing. And I was like, okay, we're turning. We're leaving. We're out. Because there's probably a little bit more than roaches. In conclusion, we ended up staying at a Hilton, which was much more than $60 a night. But it was much nicer and definitely worth it. Um, So that's how the GT started. I drove up to the GT Saturday morning. I didn't want to spend Friday night there. uh, Because, yeah, I just didn't. So I drove up and then Brian's telling me this. And I've already booked my night at the same (laughs) hotel. I'm like, mother... You know, really? So then I'm like, we're, we're just getting ready for pairings and I'm trying to cancel this hotel so I don't... And then I'm like, well, what hotel are you staying at? 
and you didn't know. And I told like, him the wrong one. <laughs> and he told me the wrong one. So then I booked a night at a hotel. So then after day one, we like we both drive to the hotel. We walk in. He he's just, him and his teammate are just sitting there waiting. And I walk in. I'm trying to check in, and the guy's looking at me like a dumbass because. <laughs> Like, what, you were in the Hilton and I was at the Hampton or something, or the other way around. But they were so, right next door, so, I mean, nothing no foul. Door, but, yeah, it, anyway. Classic TRP moments. It, it, right, yeah, just, nice. just cheating at every opportunity. Yep, <laughs> anyway, awesome. The hotels we stayed in were fine, no cockroaches. All right, anyway, that's that. 10 out of 10. Awesome. Okay, let's get into uh, some 40k, right? Yeah, let's get right. into some 40k. Uh, so the way we're going to do this episode of the Skull Takers, normally we do a blow by blow of every game, but obviously there's both of you here, so it's going to be quite a lot of games. So we'll just do a very, very quick run through of um, the games and have a focus for each of you on like what you thought was the favorite or most interesting game for various reasons. Um, and we'll obviously start by going through the lists, like what you brought, why it was interesting and stuff like that. And I think, um, obviously Brian has a like really interesting list in the fact that he ha has been experimenting with Terminators recently. And I'm sure a lot of people want to hear about how successful or unsuccessful the Terminators were. Um, but Jamie, you're, you're kind of rocking what I would consider to be a pretty unusual, like take on the world leaders and one of those things where I'm like, you're seeing success with it, which is like pretty awesome. But why don't you, well, let's kick off with you. Why don't you give us a quick uh, run through of the list? Okay. I, I mean, for anyone who's watched uh, the last Skull Takers where I, I did the 3-0 at the RTT, it's the same list as that. So you can just skip through my bullshit. But if you didn't know, uh, the, the spice in the list is the Lord of Skulls. So quick run through. Angron, Invocatus, Glaive Mo, 2x10 Jackals, 1x10 Berserkers, 1 Rhino, Three by three, eight bound, uh, chaos spawn, and the Lord of Skulls with uh, the two three damage guns, which is the Skull Hurler and the Gore Storm. Um, essentially, uh, same as before, in a predominantly melee meta, which I uh, which I would strongly say we are in right now. Blood Angels, Custodes are still fairly relevant. Orcs are, you know, they're not strong, but there's still a few dedicated orc. There's always dedicated orc players. Um, few other things out there world eaters are popular Very. Uh, yes the the lord of skulls is just it adds that really nice shooting to your list um play it, it's good daca it can pop a transport it can pop a dreadnought with you know the right shots uh it'll pick up a squad of eight bound or something like that just because of three damage and volume um but also the t13 it's very difficult for combat armies to effectively chew through a T13, 24 wound, 3 up, 5 up, 6 up model, because you, short of like a death company brick with all the things stacked on it, and then you've got minus 1 damage, not much is going to pick it up in one go, and then he's going to clap back and probably eliminate whatever was there. So it, that's really it. That, that's what it's there for. It's maybe a counter meta list or an anti meta list, and it, it does fine for me. Well, that, yeah, that, I mean, that's the highlight in, i think in like you really highlighted it that it's like functionality is based off the current meta which is like in in a very combat centric meta or like close the gap kind of meta which we're living in um like yeah i mean other than the deck company that you pointed out i'm not really sure many units off the top of my head which can one tap a chaos in combat maybe a knight rampager um yeah but, there, there's know, things out there lance yeah. will do it canis rex will do it rampager probably does it but that can do it. Yeah, I mean, like these are those things where it's like if that unit goes into your chaos and bounces, they're in a whole pile of trouble. And, and you know, you spike a couple of five up invulns, happy days. In this so. meta currently, before the codex comes out for Blood Angels, a lot of Blood Angels players running around right now. I don't know if they're going to get destroyed or saved, made worse. I don't know what's happening in that codex. Um, Blood Angels is all over the place. Dark Angels is taking off right now. I'd actually say Dark Angels is probably stronger than Blood Angels, and people don't know it yet, but that's going to be a plague that's upon us soon. Um, World Leaders are incredibly popular. Custodies are also climbing slowly. Corn Lord of Skulls just has a feast in all of that. Um, so it's actually kind of yeah. the best it's been, probably, the whole edition. Yeah. I, I, would, say, I, I, think, I, yeah. I would say. I still probably won't play just because yeah, it's not my style. 
No. But it is. And, and it changes rough. your list. It changes how your list works, like we discussed, Brian. And, and go ahead and like uh, visit the last RTT video that we do like a full, we, we honestly go on a rant for like 40 minutes about the, how the Lord of Skulls worked for him. And I, it, seeing what Jamie said, like in his games that he had and the games he performed well in, it makes sense. Like everything in there, just times two. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let's flip it to Brian. Brian, what did you bring, and uh, you know what's the spice? Yeah, so I brought pretty much my war dog list, um, which has been getting a little bit of popularity, but I did it with a twist. Um, by twist, I mean it doesn't have a war dog, and it has something much more controversial. Uh, we have Angron, Lord Unfocatus, and a Master of Executions with Berserker Glaive. Can't leave home without those three. Uh, we have 2x10 Jackals, 1x10 Berserkers with a Rhino uh, for support for the Berserkers. My new favorite, which I really just, every time I do it, I love it. It's the 3x3 three three eight pound. I just love doing that. I don't think I'm going to stop doing that for the rest uh, until we get our Codex for the rest of the uh, 10th. And then a 1x3 Exalted 8 pound squad to be the Rapid Ingress threat or to be like the turn 1 Alpha Strike, uh, try to lock 5 things up in combat uh, trick. And then I have a 10-man break of Terminators, um, all equipped with uh, bolters. Um, I wanted ten bolt or the eight bolters plus two Reaper cannons. I don't really care about compi weapons. I don't think they're any good. Um, yes, you can get good chip damage, but like world leaders don't need chip damage. We kind of just kill anything we charge. And I saw it more as a tool for picking up ten grots, scrut hounds, screens. Right, like you want to blow something out of the water. Just utility. Um, and that did actually impact two of my games, just being able to like dock a fire, like a uh, pile of scouts off the board, or even like in the mirror match, like against I ended up playing against world leaders as well. Uh, being able to say your jackals are basically invalidated because I have bolters and you don't, so my jackals get to just walk up without punishment, and your jackals just die before the game starts. So that was really awesome. Um, I'll get more into kind of my Terminator takes, but that was my list. Um, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. It was actually probably the most fun list I've played in a, a GT so far. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. better than my War Dog list. I'm still out to debate on that. I think I'd still play my War Dog list if I took it to Worlds tomorrow. So, yeah. I think one comment we can make is probably the most successful World Eaters Terminator list of the edition so far. Because I, I, you know, several people have tried uh, running World Eaters Terminators, but I think four and one. Um, with with the loss to what's well, we'll go over that after. But I, I I'll get into that too because um, I do think the one loss was a preventable loss, and it wasn't the Terminator's fault. Right, that's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> I want it to be the Terminator's fault. I, I know I you do. There. I think there's a specific way to play the Terminators to counteract their downside. It's not over. You you don't want to be over committing to them because mm -hmm. their profile is not very rewarding to spam. It just is not. Mm -hmm. Um, you also don't want to undercommit. Five does nothing more than ten is like you're you're losing lethality, you're losing mobility, or you're losing a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but ten is just that perfect problem that has to be answered, and it skews just enough that it could just win you matchups on the spot. Like they felt fantastic in the mirror, shoving ten in the middle, saying your jackals are gone, and I'm minus one damage. What are you gonna do about it? Like. Is it? Yeah, it's cool. Uh, where did you place actually in the end? What was your final position? On the uh, it was it was only fifth. Um, they did tiebreakers based off of strength of schedule. Um, and which unfortunately means if people drop, you just plummet. And yeah. Jamie and I both played the same opponent who dropped. So um, then I would yeah. point out as a point of pride that this is the second most successful Terminator list <laughs> because oh, I brought no. Terminator list to broadsword major last year. In 10th that... edition and came fourth. <laughs> so, who did? Oh, you... I did. <laughs> okay. oh, you, oh, you, oh, most yeah. when successful I, when I went, of when Pariah. Came let's yeah, get more specific. Yeah, let's okay. like. All right, let's get real specific. Let's do yeah. what they do in the Olympics, where they say like the number one swimmer that's done it like upside down since this like yeah, medaled sure. since 2015. Yeah, do that. Like I don't know. They always have a way to say really, something. I don't want to have a horse in the like best world leader Terminator list, but if I did. My horse would be winning, is what I'm saying. Um, but anyway, <laughs> let's swiftly pivot because I don't want to fall into that hole and be forced to bring Terminators to my next event. Um, 
so let's let's do a run through of like your rounds maybe give me like a highlight of like how you were feeling in the game was it a good game um how did you feel about the matchup and then what the outcome was so we'll pivot back to jamie um why don't you run us through our, your five rounds okay so my uh, five rounds was game one i played against thomas and his chaos demons uh tom is fairly local i don't know where he lives but i've seen him at a couple of gts Great player, awesome painter. I think he actually won. Yeah, he won the best painted army um, for his demons. It was Monster Mash, you know, Shalaxi, Guo, everything. Um, it was a great game. Um, the result, he got the win, 94 to 79. Um, and it was, you know, it was a close game. It could have gone both ways. Um, that's what it, it, it came down to being a dice game and stuff like that, which is how I feel a good 40k game should be. And unfortunately, with Engron and Lord of Skulls, you open yourself up to the vulnerability of 4-up invulns because they do not have the attack volume. And if those great unclean ones, the 4-up feel no pain, make slightly over average 4-up invulns, nothing happens. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't it, know about you guys, but Shalaxi fucking lives in my nightmares rent free. Like, Shalaxi I took care of. Um, Grave Mo took care of Shalaxi for me. I, I, to the wound. Literally to... And this, I'll, I'll just briefly talk on this because I felt bad but it wasn't bad. Like, so I heroic uh, glaive moments to Shalaxi after Shalaxi charged something. And I did my glaive. I did my heavy eviscerators and took down to like five wounds left or something. And then I pick up my dice for the 40 attacks. I said, okay, I've got 40 berserker attacks. I'm, I'm rolling my first 20. Okay. Roll my first 20. I think I had plus one to wound up or whatever. I don't know. Took Shalaxi down to one. And then we moved on. I was like, man, I didn't finish her. That, you know, ah, oh, shit. That's oh, really no. bad. Oh. So then I, I believe then it went to his combat. I was like, and then like halfway through, I was like, oh, no, man, I forgot my other 20 dice. Now, I had said I'm doing yeah. this two groups of 20. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't lying, it wasn't cheating. It was literally, I forgot what I said I was going to do. And I saw his face because, like, you know, obviously, Shalaxi living on a wound, he probably just wins the game. Yeah, and yeah, that that's point huge. With, with the brawl. So I was like, look, man, I, I forgot 20. Can I roll them? And he's like, no, no, that's fine. But I saw it in his face and I felt bad. But like, it's one of those things I'd said I was going to do it. And it's literally because I didn't have 40 dice to, yeah. to hold at that time. That's all that was. Um, but anyway, so I ended up killing Shalax. He like literally to the wound. I, he made every film no pain apart from one or whatever it was. Um but anyway, so yeah, he he won the brawl in the middle. Um, it's because I was focusing on everything except the Nurglings, which was what I needed to do because there's four giant bastards in the middle and the Nurglings just kept reducing my output because I couldn't afford to kill them. And that that was the crux. It happens. It yep. Happens. Um, you want me to go through the rest of my games quick? Yeah, like, go ahead. Why don't we go brief... to... Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Um, Second game, I went into Votan. I haven't played against Votan um, since LGT, actually. And this was Sam. One the of the door to the hate club is just behind me. It's yes. Right uh, oh, I'm walking straight in. Um, I did lose this game as well. Um, lost it 89 to 79. So, you know, I've got... Close games. Friend. Yeah, close games. Um, Sam, great player, great opponent. He's from... Uh, yeah, like I said, he's from Dayton. Um, problem with Votan is I couldn't crack the transports. And the transports are cracked. Like... They're just great shooting, tough. They do what they, they they're scoring your points. They're killing stuff. They're doing everything, and then you've got all the other shit. Like it's just, I I I couldn't get what I needed. I couldn't crack the transports quick enough. That so, stupid casino cannon, right? They like shoot it at you, and it either just completely ricochets or it sends you straight into the sun. There's no it, one in between. Uh, I want to say it was like the Lord of Skulls was down to like you know like thirteen or something, and then two of those guys just shot him and combination of bad dice or what whatever but he was gonna die to shoot him and he did so um but anyway it was it was another good game uh kudos to sam he deserved the win fine i go into game three um this is against chaos space marines um doug um and this you know it's the, it's the last day everyone's a bit tired and you know we're, we're just ready to be done i did pull out the victory here 87 65 um game ran a bit long uh, like a little bit over but overall um yep yeah, got got the win and i was happy with it 
Um, end of day one, we go into day two, and this is where I paired into uh, Steve, the the store owner, and his beautiful Chaos Knights, like magnificently beautiful. Chaos. Was it the Nurgle Chaos Knights? Yes. Oh my god! Well, well, those okay, things... So there was there was two. There was Dom, who's a Columbus guy, and he had the one with the the Nurgle demon on uh, on the chair. Or was that Nurgle demon? I'm thinking about the one that had like the bloat drones and the plague drones for like the chassis of the war dogs like they use the drones of the chassis and the arms are coming off of them no this was another one oh okay but yeah yeah sorry i I, I think i saw both both looked really good yeah his his was on i can't remember if it was on a display board or not anyway it was a great game um really close game uh there, there was like a little sort of like pivot moment near the end uh i won it 69 to 60 uh so you know second best score possible um but yeah it, it, awesome game um and like to start day two and get the win like end game one end day one on a win and then start day two i'm like okay i'm I'm not i'm not one and four so like I, i'm good like two and three or three and two going away from the gates of hell rallying yeah. <laughs> rallying yeah. Yeah. climbing back up and um feeling good and it, it's when, when you have a really good game a lot of good banter between you and your opponent and it's all everything you know top game yeah um, and then we go into game five. Oh, let me just turn my phone back on. And I get, oh, that's right, of course. I got Charles, my local TO. We seem to have a history of pairing in round five when we're both two and two. A nice. um, couple of years ago at Cagbash, we both paired and we went, we drew. So we both ended like two, two, one. Anyway, he brought his Necrons. And I was scared of this game as he was talking me through the list. Uh, so he had the two 20-man blobs. Uh, with the 12-inch guns, where you're just stacking like 74 different buffs on them. And he said, look, they will one-shot Angron. And when he described it, I was like, okay, it sounds like they probably would. Then he had the Silent King. Like, 90% of his list was characters. Like, I, I don't know if that's a common build at the moment with Necrons, but it's it was... Builds for sure, yeah. Each blob had two characters. Then he had uh, Loom... Ceres, the Illuminator, or whatever the hell Necrons are called. Silent King, blah, 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 loads of stuff. Um, and, and and again, it was a great game. I missiled Angron because, because after he explained all his ranges on his stuff, I knew the Lord of Skulls would be relatively safe as long as I didn't get too aggressive with him. If I used him for shooting, I'd, he'd be safe. So I knew I was going to pick up a couple of units a turn at least with him. So I was like, okay, Angron, turn one, straight down the middle, traded Angron for the two characters in one of the blobs because I knew if I got one blob to be more or less impotent then I haven't got to worry about it as much and I can focus where I need to focus so that happened so did you like you epic challenged out the yes nice cool. uh, yeah and I killed I like, like five six warriors but they immediately came back with yeah. his because he had the guy given 2d3 resurrections and yeah, that that's really heads up like Cutting the head off the snake for Necrons yeah. is really important. It feels bad in the short term, but in the long term, it really neuters them. Oh, yeah. And I also had Assassinate turn one. So it was oh. just a good. So it was like, oh, I, yeah. I had to do it anyway, <laughs> but I got five points for doing it. So then he comes back and he does kill Angron. Um, it takes quite a lot of his army, but that allows me to. I had my everything staged. And um, the the play of the game, the this is the, uh, what, what you got the PS de resistance, I guess we'd call it. Mo had just been trundling along round one and top of two for in his rhino, just waiting, just waiting. I, I knew I couldn't commit him. It had to be the perfect moment. So in a moment, you uh, uh, no, oh my god, you have just got a child. Like that's, that's that was amazing. a good enough dad joke. That was, you now that have was a good, child. <laughs> so Mo disembarks round three. I'm pretty sure makes the charge in from behind cover and everything into the second blob of warriors goes in precisions out the characters does a bunch of damage um he next turn he charges me with the remainder of his other blob which is probably like 18 or something so mo and his berserkers are surrounded by at least 40 necron warriors he's got scorpex coming down the Silent King sitting there. It's like he's he's on the middle objective, in the middle, surrounded by Terminators, like Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminators, right? The mother, he survives the whole game. 
like they just you know like punching him with their rifles and stuff now he's down to him and one berserker and there was some blood surges things happening and everything else absolute legend he probably killed like 30 necrons over the game plus some characters a couple score pegs because he did a heroic intervention late in the game it's what dreams were made of it was like <laughs> he, he's just standing there king of the hill like it was legit it was his hill and he wasn't going to give it up he, has there he been, ever not. been a character in any iteration of the rules that we've played you and me jamie we've been playing for a while that like has had this longevity in terms of just being a fucking powerhouse yeah. you know? like we're wow. a year into mo supremacy officially yeah. one year into it and they ner- thinking they about nerfed him they yeah, nerfed, nerfed him so him. many times and thinking about old mo just it, it makes me so sad of what he was but he still just one shots Avatar of Kane with his eyes closed. Like he's yeah. I'm not in this economy, guys, you can't leave home without Mo. So the only character that I think is like even remotely comparable is the Dark Apostle with the um all the, the transhuman to hit from ninth edition on the Terminator oh, blob that yeah. had transhuman to wound. Yeah. But that was like six months, right? Like yeah. we've had Mo for a year. And it's just like this guy keeps on fucking going, you know. No, they oh, honestly, if they take him away. We drop straight to the gutters. Still, I think it's over. It's over. But there's no more armies doing well right now. Um, I don't know how. Yeah, this, that, it's weird. This dude carries games on his back. Do you remember the first video we ever made, Dara? Where well, it was the video that you got introduced as formal member of the Red Path. Do you remember what video that was? Maybe talking about drills. No, no, no? Okay, was, I'm not sure. It was then, um, our chosen and the master of executions. Any good? No, but oh maybe. shit, okay. <laughs> it was that. So the, and this was when like Mo basically had first come out, like yeah, you know, maybe the first six months or something. And and he was dog shit when he first came out. Like he was dog shit until now. He was bad in yeah. as well. Yeah, true. He, he was like okay. You could argue he like a, a fifty moment. point character gives you two blood tithe. That was the argument. Yeah. It's like and slightly bigger spawn sacrifice blood bag. When right? he had the explosion on him, because he had you could give him like a four up invo and explosion. He was okay as a little missile. Like right. he got used to it. But yes, tenth mo is is a legend. He's you, a primark ever be remembered he is the primark yes if yeah. if, he, if like something bad happens to him god forbid something bad happens to our boy i will genuinely have like an immemarium like you know framed <laughs> picture of my mo just like up on my hobby desk yeah so i'll always remember you know just like i feel like everyone has mo stories you know it's yeah. just like he did this for you what so hasn't like, he killed just yeah, literally yeah genuinely i'm not sure the know. ten berserkers are just there to make sure he can do it again yeah, yeah. Pretty much, awesome. yeah. Um, right, but yeah, that's uh, so I ended up three and two. Um, I came 28, 28th out of the 60 that ended up finishing, uh, nice. 59 60 that ended up finishing. Um, the like I ended up with 404 battle points, I, and I know battle points isn't the best like tiebreaker type kind of thing for rankings, I understand that, but I, I did check because you know I'm, I'm vain. And um, if my 404 battle points had been it, I would have come 15th. Like, I would have been more or less yeah. second oh, okay. or third do, in the three. Doing years. win path is not great for tie. It's like there is no good solution for tiebreakers. Yeah, win path is one of my least favorite, unfortunately, because GTs, people will drop day one after they do bad, and then that tanks your win path. Yeah. I'm going to so say this can't. now, and it's maybe a controversial take. I don't mind differential for tiebreaker as the first tiebreaker like, like school differentials style. right yeah yeah i think i think that's fine it, 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 on a gt level that's fine i think on an rtt level oh no never an rtt yeah level. R- rtt yeah. needs to stick much closer to like random sort of stuff RTT, yeah because strength of sched- schedule kind of works in an rtt because there probably won't be drops right you I know think, it's like... yeah there's no reason to drop an rtt yeah. to... <laughs> <within> reason <laughs> Some of us might have done it before. <laughs> I, I've done. I have dropped once or twice for personal reasons. Never. Yeah, that's, I've dropped in RTT. Yeah. yeah, but you're oh. not going to lose a game, game one, and be like, "Oh, I can't yeah. win anymore." Like, but that, that mean, also that's... does happen. People will quit after one or two. Uh, that's not what RTTs are for. No, but anyway. um, but it's a small point. But you, so you finished yeah. three and two. I, um, I end up in the top half. I was three and yeah. two. Um, mostly like the the games were. 
fine to to excellent. Um, I'd say my best two. No, no disrespect to any of my opponents because you know if uh, they were good games, but uh, the game versus Steve and the game versus Charles were pretty tied for me as the highlight games, mostly because of the the things that happened narratively for me, if that makes sense. Like the Mo just standing there. And, and that's awesome. You yeah. Know, that's and, what you um, live for as a world leader player, just exactly. the, those cinematic moments. But right. so like, you know, finishing up in, in that uh position with that with that result, like I assume you're pretty pleased, right? Like after yeah. a, I guess a rough opening. And a yeah. full rally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like completely rally and, and bring it back against some like tough opposition as well is is pretty awesome. Yeah. I I mean I, I was you know, I was owing to like I wasn't like super depressed or anything because now I, I'll admit I was I'm really aiming now for a four and one GT. Um because I feel like I've got enough length of service and experience um where I think a four and one is a realistic goal. Um but I'm happy to three and two. But I, you know, this one because it was I'm not going to say a small GT, but 60 is on the kind of like mid range to small side of a GT these days, anyway. Um, in the US, yes. In the US, is like yeah. a major. And 60 is a small LGS doing their own independent thing. Yeah. There's a lot of big GTs that will go rent halls. Like the, the Gem to... Hammer is going to be, or the Gem one's 100 player in November. And That's a major Michigan player. GT That's... goes up to 200, which yeah. is coming up here soon. I'll be at, but not playing. Like size and player population really isn't an indicator of how like valuable or invaluable a GT win is, in my opinion. Because no, like, I get that. you it's can go to the biggest event possible. in the world and play three people who've never played, you know, competitive. Like I, when I went to LVO, three of my opponents was their first tournament. Especially know? in this area, this GT did have I think four people that are top one hundred in the world. Yeah. yeah. In like, the world at this have, GT, like, your regional metas are both Shark Tanks. So like uh, the Midwest, we all just never get, we never form. You never hear about it because we never get on teams because we all hate each other. So like we're all just like independent little angry people. Um, but we all just attack each other at GTs and RTTs. Like sometimes you get paired into each other repeatedly in RTTs, and it's like the sweatiest RTT you'll ever see. Well, everybody else is having a good time. Yeah. Not saying that's not a good time. Obviously, I'm just but joking yeah, here. depending on what you're there for. But, yeah. but sometimes it's just good practice at an RTD or something. But but yeah, I, I was like, with this being for for in that context, a mid sized to smaller uh, GT, not small, but mid sized GT, I was hopeful. But yes, with the additional context of Brian saying, yeah, you know, we had four four top one hundred players, you know, Gem showed up for probably about a third to half of the player base, and like we've talked about before, super competitive meta. Um, the Arch guys, the Columbus guys are all competitive as well. Like it was a very competitive matter. So three and two, I'm happy with. You know, you're not going to go to a GT where you can safely predict four and one. Um, no, but this is. It just feels like around here, you, it's just the next level of quality players, which which does make achievement harder, and that's how it should be. You shouldn't have an easy path to win, um, and I'm glad I don't. But but yeah, I, I mean. I wasn't feeling depressed after the two losses. Good games, good opponents. Um, and like I said, there was there was good food and we could drink on site. And, you know, everything was fine. I think to accept in the bitterest of opponent of players, um, it would ameliorate any sort of bad feels you might have because you could get some pulled pork and you could drink a beer. <laughs> and that goes a long way. It, it really does. does. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Nice closer. Um, let's flip to Brian. Yeah. So uh, my janky list, uh, day one, uh, I actually get paired into uh, game one against Doug, who is uh, one of the people that Jamie also played in his round three. Um, newer player. Um, he's a Chaos Space Ring player, painted up nice Iron Warriors, actually painted legitimately to be Iron Warriors, which is a rare sight. They do exist. Very rare, though. Um, he got tired of playing Fellhammer Siege Host because that detachment just turned out doesn't work. Um, we kind of called that one earlier on. So he switched over to Soul Pact, just the index one. Um, he wasn't familiar with World Leaders. Same story. I've told this a billion times. Uh, push out in the middle of the board, get charged. Uh, game was over 100 to 12. Not really much to say about that game. Um, 
I did try to like give him pointers and stuff here and there. Um, he was somewhat receptive, but uh, kind of just had to. I was shooting for there was a very cool prize that they were giving away, Gore Child. Um, and that Gore Child replica painted actually pretty well, yeah. and I wanted it. So unfortunately, I had to go for the hundred. Uh, but he seemed to enjoy the game. Um, we had a good laugh. One of my models fell on the floor, got broken, but it's no big deal. I'm repainting my whole army. I got to kind of like rib him a little bit for that, but I ended up being like, ah, I don't care. It's fine. So that was game one against classic CSM. Uh, game two, uh, was, so I went from game one straight into, like I said, I was telling Jamie, we got four of the top 100 players in the world. And that's my game two at a GT is I get paired into one of the top players in the world. Uh, Let me just... The most of these top four hundred, oh sorry, most of these top one hundred players are in my RTTs every month. Like, oh yeah, they're just the local guys. So and uh, I get paired into Blood Angels, um, which is kind of he he's playing an off meta Blood Angels list, I'd say, but still very much so with the going with the grain, not against the grain. Uh, Conan Jennings on Blood Angels, uh, he was playing the two Vanguard Vet bricks and only one Death Company brick. Uh, with Lamartes in the air, with two Vindicators. Uh, this is the game I want to get a little bit more detail in, because this is the game where actually the Terminator shined probably the most. Um, he basically looked down at them, and he said, I am never touching these, because they are just a waste of time and a trap. Um, Terminators threaten minus one damage, and Death Company bounce. Same thing with the Vanguard Vets. They'll charge. They're only strength five, so if I charge them, they'll probably bounce, assuming I kill a few. Like, it's just not a good engagement, and he doesn't want to be sitting there fight with through fight on Death Terminators. It's just not an even trade. Um, Space Marine players love their scouts, so he was throwing scouts up in the middle of the board, and go turn two for my go turn. Um, there'll be a picture where you can actually kind of see it. He has scouts with um, behind them with jump intercessors and then a Vindicator. Um, so he had like a double layer screen, and I had Terminators and Angron. And the Terminators were able to completely pick the scouts up with full rerolls to hit um, with their shooting. Pick the scouts up. They charged the uh, assault intercessors behind the scouts. Angron charged the assault intercessors behind the scouts. Terminators pick up the assault intercessors. Angron keeps going through and picks up a Vindicator. Um, this then forces him to answer Angron. His other Vindicator's tied up. I just keep throwing eight bound at it. Um, I don't care. I just want the Vindicator staying in one spot, staying away from the Terminators. Because that's like his only clean answer to him. It's just a blast profile. So he had to bring Lamartes down to try to kill Angron. Barely killed him to the wound. Um, I did pop minus one damage. But now Lamartes is out in the open. Moe's over there massacring the Vanguard Vet squads one at a time. Um, and the Terminator squad just completely roundhouse kicks uh, Lamartes' squad and seals the game. And that whole play was only enabled due to that rapid fire bolter shooting and the double charge and being able to have this immovable object that could not be answered. It was a stat check that was going to be a time sink for him. And it allowed my other assets that were more lethal to go pick on targets that they were more suited to, to just skirmish on the flanks. Mo was able to hit ideally what he wanted to hit and be safe while uh, Angron and the Terminators were kind of working as a team to just be two really hard to kill things in the middle of the board that required, like I needed to bait Lamartes out and I didn't want him doing some weird play to pick off Mo. He picks off Mo, I lose. So um, kind of classic, like hammer anvil style. Like here's my anvil. Um, it's not as lethal. They're not as lethal as I wanted them to be, but they were annoying enough, which is exactly where I wanted them to be. Um, so I ended up taking that game. It was ritual. I went first uh, 79 to 44 fairly decisively against what I would say would be one of our harder matchups if you were playing a more traditional world leaders list. Like, in yeah. that matchup, the six exalted eight bound are dead. They would charge something, get fought on death, and die. Like, because you can't minus one damage the fight on death. Terminators can take it on the chin. Um, granted, you're going to lose a few models, but having five Terminators left can still pick up Assault Intercessors. Like, they're still very useful in that matchup. So, um, 10 out of 10, they did their job, actually, really well. Nice. Uh, so, moving cool. on to game three. What was um, the final score in that one? Uh, I think I said 79 to 44. Okay. Me. And it was a very bloody game. Rituals, when you're playing two melee armies, too, like Blood Angels versus World Leaders or World Leaders on World Leaders, um, specifically those two, 
those matches, if played correctly by two very high level opponents, will be a five turn game. They will be very low scoring because we're not going to be we're going to be knocking each other off of the primary primary every turn. So like typically you won't see hundred pointers on those with two competent players going at it. Uh, round three, uh, I get paired into Nicholas Chesnick, who's on Thousand Suns. Uh, I'd say one of the more problematic armies for us, just because Thousand Sun pilots tend to also just be good at the game. That's just kind of the requirement to play the army and make it to be 4-0-3-0 going for that game. Um, he was playing the Terminator Brick, um, which, if you don't know, they have a very nasty combo where they can give themselves dev wounds, full rerolls to hit and wound, lethal hits, with 40 bolter shots, and they'll come down and blow up a baby knight on average. No, they'll blow up a big knight on average. I did it to Jamie, actually, blow up his Lord of Skulls just with Terminator bolter shooting. Yeah. Um, he And then they have the relic to pick them up and drop them down immediately. They can do it turn one. He did that to me, put my Terminator brick in his sight lines. I went to ground because the bol bolters are all AP1, too, just because Thousand Sun things. Lit them up, only killed one and a half of my Terminators. And then his Terminators were staring at my Terminators, and my Terminators were very angry, and also wound on twos to threes. And um, they actually did not end up charging his Terminators. Angron, Mo, I threw the whole kitchen sink at those things, because those things are incredibly durable, because they have transhuman, they have minus one to wound, um, and I drew assassinate, so I had to kill him. But the Terminators went on a side quest, and uh, they drew advance and charge, auto six 13 inches up the board, and he got a little aggressive with his movement, and he put his... Like, they have the scary Infernal Master combo with the 2d6, 2 damage dev wound. I managed to charge him through, like, the 2-inch, two 2x4 two terrain piece, so he couldn't overwatch. Turn 1 on, like, a 5-inch charge with no CP. I had no CP up, because I nailed the charge. And turn 1, I took, like, 600 points of Terminators away from him and all that Cabal, and I took 5 Rubrics and his Infernal Master and his Cultists and his Zangor Enlightened all on the first turn and I look down at my tray for my losses and it's just two terminators. So, <laughs> so um I might get you need a that... fucking infernal dude without him ever firing that dumbass cannon. That's a like... it is a dumbass cannon too. <laughs> that is the stuff of fucking dreams. Not Holy getting shot no through man. a wall with that thing. Yeah, I was just I was on I mean, I was on top of the world and he was he was not he was not already not doing super great because he didn't roll great on his dev wounds and my terminators. Regardless, I don't know if I would have done that play, but we all learned then. Um game kind of went downhill from there. You just left with Magnus, Armon, and Ten Rubrics, and that's it for an army against a fully healthy world leader army. And I think Angron ended up reviving turn five just to put salt in the wound, but it, I, I mean the game was just gone by them. So I got that game eighty seven to forty five. Again, Terminator moment, Exalted Ape Bomb probably would have died there because I rolled a lot of twos to save. And being able to save on twos in that specific moment was like life-saving because I did not have Feel No Pain up either. That was no Feel oh, No Pain. Wow, wow okay. Because I, for Thousand Suns, my typical strategy is to do Advance and Charge plus two, like stay in your deployment zone. I want you to stay there. Like I want to scare you, scare the crap out of him. And he was not a scaredy pants. And he came out and scared me. But then I was like, that's it? Like, Okay, my turn. So that was the end of day one. Uh, I just go on a quick little side quest. Ended up taking Jamie out to all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue after this, which yeah. was very good. Which is, if you're unaware of what Korean barbecue is, is you cook it yourself, all-you-can-eat. They put a little grill in front of you at the table. They just bring it to you, plate after plate after plate of food, and you just cook it yourself. It was delicious. The key, the key there, as Dara will know from LVO, so, is plate me. after plate after plate of food. That, that's the Doing way that shit with out. Jamie is like a life-threatening move. I actually, I thought I was going to die when we did the Brazilian barbecue in Vegas. Like, See, his problem was he cooked it and then he ate it. Then he was upset there was no more cooked food to eat and he had to watch the next round cook. So oh, yeah. he ended no, up sure. hiring me to happen. continuously cook his food for him at the table. I would believe that, yeah. yeah. Listen, man, I, I, I love to eat. I love to eat. <laughs> so... I sleep like I, a. I actually love like dinner with Jamie. It's like the most fun thing, you know, because it's like you get to see this like different side of Jamie. It's like the berserker in him comes out. You know, it's the real like primal man. <laughs> and I was like, "Are you enjoying like this is his first time at Korean barbecue?" He's like, "What do you mean I have to cook it myself?" And then we go there, 
And then he's, I, I like turned him because he hasn't said a word. And I was like, are you having a good time? And he's like, do you hear me talking? And then he just keeps eating. And I was like, well, man, I better cook this man more food. And just... <laughs> So oh, uh, I hate it so much, but I love it. Went, I love it. went to bed with a happy belly. Um, I wasn't stressed out at all, other than the TO semi gaslighting us about pairings. They told us it wouldn't be Swiss pairings, but every single round it was Swiss pairings. So it was throwing me off because I was like, either God is playing tricks on me, or I'm just, just it, it's Swiss. So I ended up getting paired into one of the best players in the world. Period. Not even top 100. Uh, Fulcher Piles. Got second at LVO uh, because his opponent rolls two sixes in a row. Ha ha. Like, I mean, they, that's kind of like the joke. that I rolled all of my... Um, every time I did my eight dice roll in front of him, I'd roll every die one at a time. And, like, if Angron was going to come back, I'd, like, go six, six. And I was like, oh, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And then threatened to roll the other six. Never got it. Um, I don't like some of the GW terrain layouts. I liked all of the Leviathan layouts. I loved all of the Leviathan layouts. Every single one, even layout one, which was sus. I still like it. Uh, layout six can go burn in a dumpster fire. That layout is How hot do we trash. Not know? Don't it... have a fucking sight line straight down the middle. Like, we're... yeah, sorry. sorry there, yeah, I, I obviously touched a nerve. Um, this deployment zone, go look at it, guys. It's on GW's website. Just feels like ninth edition deployment zones all over again. There is nowhere to hide, nowhere to stage, even in your own deployment zone against the fastest shooting armies, you will be shot. It just feels like turn one win for a lot of shooting armies. Uh, in the case of me against uh, uh, Eldar on Purge the Foe, which is already a mission that you don't have to play the game on to win. You just got to stand on your home objective and kill one thing a turn and you will be ahead on primary. Eldar, pop out, kill one world leader unit, fire and fade back. One inch from the wall, repeat. Um, the only way to counteract that is to pray to get a little lucky. Advance and charge. Just shove your whole army out on the board and go for your six, seven inch charges on every single unit in your army. I make most of them. Um, shields are down though. I don't have feel no pain. I burned all my CP, re-rolling, auto advancing, all of that. Uh, making sure I got as much in as possible. And then Eldar fate dice bullshit, right? Like, getting a little lucky with save rolls and then doubling down on that with dice manipulation. I did. I left everything alive basically at one wound or with a couple models left. So I didn't get kill one. Kill more was just in his court. Like Angron threw put nine saves on the Avatar of Cain. Avatar of Cain made like six or seven. And I was like, that's just, it's Jover now. Like we're done. Um, Can't really do much about that matchup. Like, Eldar is a good matchup for world leaders specifically. Like MSU eight bound, love that matchup. Like running those little five man like warp spiders are not killing three eight bound. Right? They'll mess up cultists. They'll hurt eight bound, but they'll get picked up most likely on the swing back. Um, but just not having staging points is just awful. I would never run layout six on a GT just because it. I mean, maybe if that's the world leader bias coming in, but it did feel really feels bad not being able to, like, against an army as mobile as that, nowhere to hide, and as lethal as that army is. Mm -hmm. uh, did not feel good. Uh, so I did actually take my loss there, but granted, it was, like I said, probably one of the best Eldar pilots in the country, um, if not the world. So, good job, Vulger. Uh, he beat me 79 to 41. Uh, fun fact, Dara, I secret missioned him. Um yeah. And I heard your voice in my head saying, don't do it, don't do it. So I did the battle line one, because Mo was like in his back line somewhere. But then Angron revived top of five and could have landed on the objective. So I am having regrets. I should have chosen the HQ on the objective, banking on the Angron res again. Should have I mean, done before, it. Right? Yeah, right? That means it'll work again. And it would have. So confirmation bias. I, I secret mission game five against Charles Necrons, by the way. Forgot to mention. So I'm like, joining the club. I've joined the club, Barry. You need to join too. And then fuck that noise. I will not see that's my thing. I'm not gonna fucking secret mission in this meta. <laughs> I'm just not doing You're it. not gonna until you lose to it and you're like, this is dumb. I gotta do it to somebody else. Um game five, final game, uh against actually a member of the Discord server. I'm unaware what his tag is, but Alex Roach is Fail it F A E 
L-E-X. And we've been talking in the Discord, too. You can see us in Comp General and General Discos. Um, we're in there uh, talking. Uh, it was a very fun game. Uh, basically lined up like we were playing AOS. But like I said, for some reason, all of the really bad world leader units are fantastic in melee mirrors. Like, your Hellbrute, your, like, the Hellbrute is good in the world leader mirror match. It will just go smack 8-bound off the board, and if they fail to kill it back with minus 1 damage, it'll smack them back off the board, right? Like, it's actually really good there. The Defiler, I could see play, because it's got good guns. Terminators, fucking rock in the world leader mirror match. Your opponent basically doesn't get to have jackals, and you have an unkillable threat that only Angron can answer, but also doesn't answer it. No, he doesn't. No. He's the only one that cleanly picks them up, and maybe live. Well, he will live the crack back, but then he's just gonna die. Mo bounces off them because there's no character in the unit. Haha, -ha, good funny moment. We don't have Terminator Lords. Good. That's like the only good upside is Mo yeah. can't kill us back. Uh, Mo won't punish us for our sins. Um, and it's funny how good the Terminator Brick is in the mirror match, which world leaders are very popular right now. Like they're popping off everywhere. Which is I partially think we're actually yeah. in the top five in terms of like faction popularity right now right but we don't have a crazy faction win rate was low this week at 45 percent. i think on but we still had an much, event win in multiple top four, tens yeah. right like shut archie up, nerds. shut up nerds listen world eaters were eight percent of the makeup of rgt there's a stat that's actually important anyway eight percent it was it was given so like i just in this meta the bad units are working, guys. So, like, maybe <laughs> try your Forge Fiends, try your Hellbrutes, try your Terminators. I really like the 10-man Terminator brick. I think I was talking with Jamie and Dara before we actually started recording. If I had to make a Terminator list, I think I would double down on what I made. Um, I think 5 is incorrect because you won't get to benefit from the rule at all. Uh, 5 ingressing is just lame. Just ingress Exalted 8-bound instead. It's just better. Um, 15 by extension is not good because you have 10 and 5 or 5, 5, 5. I don't like that. And I think there's a point where their damage output can be disappointing into certain matchups. So you don't want to be relying on it. And the minute you start over committing and doing 20, 30 Terminators, your damage output tanks hard and you have no makeup for it. You will bounce and they are durable. They're not invincible. And you, they are OC1. You can just lose games because you bring 20 Terminators. Um, ten are if great. You played, for example, basilisks. Basilisks. Yeah, I hate being movement three. Wouldn't be me. Um, <laughs> that's rough. That's or rough. Like, you know, night spinners or any of the other plethora of units that can slow you down. Yeah, and like, I wouldn't. I like the ten because it presents a problem for your opponent to answer, and some armies cannot, and it is not enough of an overcommitment to it for it to be game losing. If your opponent does you, have something. You're right. Once you go past 10, you're skewing into something that the army doesn't want to be. Correct. Um, it's working against a lot of the army rules, that unit. 10 is fine because, as you said, it presents an interesting problem, but it doesn't, you know, uh, absorb the rest of the list. But when you go past 10, you're like, well, my movement buffs that I can get from my army ability are not so much buffs. They're actually just like making up for my downside here. You don't have the damage output. You don't really have a way of you know, meaningfully improving that damage output. It's never going to reach 8-bound levels of damage. Um, but, like, in most cases, like, 95 out of 100 cases, like, Terminators with plus 1 to wound will kill the exact same thing Exalted 8-bound with plus 1 to wound will kill. But unfortunately, that 5% is, like, Dark Angels and Custodes. And, like, a I lot of... Other... I think it's more than that, man. I don't think they're... Six exalted eight bound. I think of a way higher killing power than ten. Terminators. It's about the same amount of power fist swings as it is chain fist swing, or as it is sweeping swings. Uh, it, it's like similar. And then you get anger on yeah, rerolls. Next, I'm saying that like broadly, what you're charging with them will die until you charge something that won't, and then you're gonna feel really bad. Like I charge ten Eldar troop. The troop they have a one wound models T three. They have a four up invuln, five up funeral pain. Ten terminators charge them. There are three troop members left. Like that was really disappointing. I... Of rain squad, right? Yeah, and exalted eight bound yeah. probably picked that up on average. They do. Yeah, I've I've picked that up multiple times with that. I think I think that the the Terminator spice in your list, and I I agree the ten Terminators is the sweet spot because uh, I I ran two by ten a while ago and stuff like that. I think it's the more elegant and 
uh what's the word here um synergistic version of the lord of skulls it's a tough problem that counters the melee meta like specifically like you mentioned the the mirror match for instance but it does it for what 90 points cheaper you're you're benefiting a lot more because you, you've got the scout and stuff like that that you can choose to throw you you know whatever you want um your shooting is the chaff clearance rather than you know like killing a medium toughness model yeah, combi weapons are not where you want yeah to no you, you're bringing bolters and reapers 99 percent of the time um I think the Terminator is the better way to do the this kind of non-standard Angron list that we, we've both got kind of brought. Because we're both doing the 3 by 3 8 bound Angron and Bacatus, Glaive Mo, 2 by 10 Jackals. It's really, I brought the Lord of Skulls, you brought the 10 Terminators. And just hearing you discuss what it did, it's... The I think it's better. Like the the Lord of Skulls is fun and does answer some things that maybe the Terminators don't. But I think the Terminators answer far more problems than the Lord of Skulls does, and and, and has fewer weaknesses than the Lord of Skulls does. And the truth of tenth edition and kind of the end of ninth edition is still it being able to go through walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is just already such an advantage too. Yeah. Like if we ever do get Berserker Cav, if they can't go through walls gonna suck it's gonna be really hard to make it work we're gonna try yeah but being able to have a strong infantry unit like eight bound or terminators be able to just and bulldoze honestly, straight through a wall makes it really hard for your opponents to actually the, the lord you. of skulls if he got moved through walls wouldn't change too much for him he's because he's because because the length of his base and he's only he's 10 move through through the wall. He, he's got a dumpy yeah. he can't get through yeah, yeah. he's like big knights on a on an oval base you can probably finagle but anyway sorry so, yep. Takeaway is I don't know if it's better than the six because my old list would have six exalted eight pound and a spawn, and I think the war dog works its way back in there somehow. Um, because no, uh, yes, a war dog works its way back in there somehow. I'd have to go look at the list again. Um, I don't know if this list is better than that. I do think it's worth testing further, and I do think specifically in this meta, it actually is not a meme. I will safely say it is not a meme. We went back and did the tier list again where we put them all the way down at like mid C tier, bottom of C tier. I'd probably move them to bottom of B, maybe middle B. In the right in the right list, in the right meta, with only ten of them, yeah. I, I think they Specifically are Specifically that. No more, no less. I would never, never do it. Well. I, just, I, I, I honestly just don't see it yeah i mean i i don't know i i gave you my evidence i know I, I i see your points and i agree with them but i my personal opinion this is just my personal opinion is that you can do that stuff with other things in our book that are like uh pretty much as durable like 10 Terminators, 6 Exalted 8 Band. There's not much of a difference there in terms of survivability. It was the um, two ups in cover. It was the two ups in the cover. The two ups in cover is nice. I'll give you that. But I don't know. Maybe it's just how I roll Feel No Pains on Exalted. Because like I just love being like fives, fives, you know? You just love um, the high of spiking three fives on a Feel No Pain and laughing at your opponent. No, I love the high of clustering 12 Exalted 8 Band around the Demon Prince and being like, yeah, they're Terminators now. <laughs> Get fucked. Uh, I also find T6 to be a big breakpoint, which the Terminators don't have. Which um, they don't. I, I think that is actually quite relevant. There's a lot of strength five combat. Um, and like um, I said, I don't think I don't. I'm not comfortable in saying that it's better than that. I yeah, probably. I, mean, I don't think it's bad. I'm, and I think the ten is exactly correct. Like you go more than ten, it's bad. You go less than ten, it's bad. Um, ten is fine. I mean, I ran it like this time last year, and it was decent. But it's just when I can't decide that i want to move halfway across the board with a single unit that needs to move halfway across the board i just like i now that i have the reach i'm like i want that reach in every list that i bring and i think that's a good thing to clarify like between jamie myself and dar we all have like individual play styles that are quite different Completely from each different. other yeah like yeah. uh I think you and me are like reasonably similar brian but it's still pretty different and then like jamie is just like complete like Jamie gave me one of his lists. I would probably go zero and six at an event. You know, it would it would be bad. The, the trick is to just do like 
vast amounts of drugs beforehand and then <laughs> see what happens. That's not true. That is not true. It was a joke. But if it wasn't, <laughs> you'd get the same result. I just, <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's a playstyle thing, right? And it's there's a, an aspect of regional meta as well. If you're in a meta that loves like combat right now, yeah, the ten terminators could certainly be a play. Right. If you're in something that, which I think is like fast gun good, I think the ten terminators get found out real fucking hard. Yes, leechers it... rock up in front of them and put them in the sin bin. Um, but the yeah. terminators call blood angels and world leaders out real hard, but then they get called out by Tau overnight. Like they're just done, dead. Like yeah. Tau picks them up in one shooting like, phase. With, with the breachers, like you can't go to ground because they ignore cover anyway. They hit on twos with like forty shots. Oh yeah, yeah. It, like yeah, I said, it's a medical. <laughs> but I think Jamie, what this room was. 85 percent melee lists oh yeah yeah what yeah it was it was like it was the 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 arena it was yeah. brutal but that that is an aspect of like this this current meta that we're living in is, is like very melee heavy i mean you saw it at wtc this weekend there's lots of lots of melee going on um lots of world leaders there lots of other combat armies which were making things you know, like the most interesting games on the stream tables anyway were those combat ones where it's all about making that perfect exchange and controlling aspects of the board with your combat. So I, I do think it's like when you have a unit that is versatile like the Terminators or like the Corn Lord of Skulls, which provides a problem in this current meta, it's it kind of messes people up when they see it across the table because it's not what they're expecting from a world leaders list, so they don't necessarily have a conventional plan that's going to work into it. Um, but also it gives you a deeper toolbox for answering what you know will probably be the most common thing facing you. Well, but I like it from that aspect. Just to kind of uh, merge that with what Brian said earlier about this event, right? So we knew day one was layout one, which is great. It's a nice little layout for us. And day two was layout six, which is great for shooting armies, essentially. So if we look, um, Peter Elias won the event. Uh, with Eldar. Folger came second with Eldar. Dave uh, Delisle came third with Tyranids, Exocrines and stuff like that. Um, Jeff Perry came uh, fourth with Necrons, then Brian came in at fifth. Then we had T-Sons. And then, and then we get into the true combat stuff. So, uh, you know, arguably, of, of all the armies that were there, because there was like one or two Tau players, maybe, but Eldar are pretty shooty. Now, now I know the the list that Folger brought wasn't the like the shootier version, right, Brian? I like, mean, the right list. It, it's it's so it, it had the ten wraith guard brick, yeah. which right. is enough to send you into the sun. Yes, but he didn't have like the D cannons and stuff. no, no. But it was double warps. Like, it was still. I, I'd argue yes. that it, it wanted a firing lane. Yes, right, and then you got the nids, which they like to shoot, but they're also, you know, can can handle combat generally. Necrons, right? So these are guys that knew that I, I know Folger and Dave play multiple armies. I'm not familiar with Peter or or what Jeff plays. They knew day one, if you can get three wins on a combat board, day two, you've got guns that are going to set you up for success on a shooting board, right? So, yes, combat armies can... Most people are going to look and remember day one terrain and missions. Oh, I play World Eaters, I play Blood Angels, I can do well on this. If you've got an army that can survive combat, but also shoot well, like those kind of armies do, you're, you're, you're really set up for success, I think, when you know the missions and the terrain like this. Now, if it was board one for both days... I think we'd see a very different top five. Or, or uh, it'd be a different top five. I think Brian probably would have five and owed for it, or, or a much better chance of five but, and owed. I mean, but you still... Oh, which is why... I, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty confident I could have won that game if it was a different layout. It was entirely yeah. the layout. But that's the game. I'm not complaining. Yeah, yeah. Like, because yeah. uh, it's easy to get trapped in the, the what-ifs. Um, mm -hmm. It's not really a healthy place to be. Which is why I said I'm probably going to keep testing this list. Um, I'm still not in love with it. I still love my dog list more. Uh, I'm just happy. Like I think I'm seventeen two and one so far uh, at my GTS this year. Okay. So I'm that's pretty damn good. So I, nice. uh, so I'm gonna try to add more skulls to that skull throne uh, coming up here. Beat the heat is in two weeks. 
so far, like nobody signed up and somehow like I think there's a reason for it. And I think the reason is I said four people uh, top 100 in the world were the, uh, at this GT. I think there's like 10 out of the 15 people signed up top 100 in the world going to that GT. So we're going to have like a mini like WCW throwdown in the middle of South Bend, Indiana. Like <laughs> It's going to be a slaughter. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> nice. What about you, Jamie? Any uh, any big like innovations, or you think you're just gonna keep trucking with the truck? No, I think I think Lord of Skulls. I think I'm changing. I've already got a couple of lists I'm working on. They, at this point in the edition and the the index life cycle, there's not much more for me to test out. Um, I've done Terminators. I've done Lord of Skulls. Done Forge Fiends and Predators. Um, like right now, I'm you know trying. Bring Khan and Ten Boys back, but I I, I don't know. I I've, I've had a good run with the Lord of Skulls. I've I've given him his reps. Um, I, I've got a bid on eBay right now for a second Lord of Skulls. Um, if if I win that, I will be in a position to run three Lords of Skulls. Which look, this isn't saying that's a good list. I'm just saying. Sometimes you know you can't let your memes be dreams. So, okay. GW is going to announce they're going to Legends with their codex. I hope you know. Probably, I don't care. Listen, <laughs> I've got a brass scorpion that I never got to play. So, ditto. Same. Same. Man, it's, it's a shame how that's a common story. Yeah, and I've All got right. drills that I never get to play, and contenders, and there. Are... Anyway. <laughs> It, so, Dar, what's your takeaway of all of our tomfoolery for the weekend? Close us out here with like your final thoughts yeah, on I mean, just all the jank. I I'm into it, you know. Um, it's always like just more fun to do a video like this where it's kind of like the boys have done a typical red pop bullshit thing and not brought the most obvious thing in the world. Tried to like make meme units work and actually did make meme units work. Um, it's just it's just more fun to have a discussion rather than being like I brought the basic anger on list and you know played my games won some lost some or won them all um as the case may be it's always just fun to have innovation on the red path and like probably is like one of my favorite aspects of like doing this kind of stuff is like picking out interesting things and and talking about them um you know i got real sick following the wgc of just seeing this exact same world leaders list over and over again and being like okay you know this one's gonna play out um but you know we're out here we're innovating and it's been pretty much a year since the edition came out and we're still finding, you know, unique angles in a fairly shallow index, which is saying a whole bunch. Like mm -hmm. I've been trying out stuff myself as well. So like, it's uh yeah, it's pretty fun. And like, obviously super glad to hear that you boys had a good time and, you know, nice to see you both going to events and, and hanging out and all that good stuff. And along may it continue, but um, unless there's anything else you guys want to close out with before we shut this one down. Um, Thanks for everybody that came out and said hi. There's actually a lot of world leader, like almost every world leader player I ran into there is in the Discord. Thank you guys for coming out. Thanks for coming up to say hi. Thank you for the support. Those of you not there, try to find events that we're going to because, like I said, Jamie and I are starting to get around now. So, Yeah, I'll just double down on that. Uh, it was great seeing everyone. Um, great to see more people from the local area running world eaters, Greg and Alex and a couple of guys. Um but I will say, look up on BCP, the Gem War Game in GT. Um, let me see. That is uh, it's coming up in November. November 7th. Yeah, it's first or second weekend in November. Uh, Brian and I are going to both be there. Um, it's a, a great location just by Wright State Air Force Base. Um, the, the event is in a hotel, and they've got a bar. And they put on great food. So listen, more food, more drinking, fun. you can stumble up and down to your hotel room. Um, Brian and me are going to be there. And it's a 100-person event. And I think there's still like... Is, they've only just, like more than half the tickets are left. There's yeah, like but only, That'll disappear. That yeah. always happens is they post a GT and then it gets to be like two weeks before and then they're just gone. Yeah. I would, I'd recommend buying early. It will sell out. Like, it will, it, it will disappear in, in one weekend after like the tickets There's just a start going. Moment and then suddenly it's gone. Um, and the, it's a great event. Um, I I went to teams. I, I missed out the last couple of GTs because of it, stuff. Yes, same one as Dayton, right on the Air Force Base. It's a really cool venue. 
you get to hear the planes fly over your head and shake the room every now and then. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's how I'll leave it. I had a great weekend. Looking forward to another great weekend in a couple of months' time. And that's me done. Sweet ass. Well, folks, uh, if you've stuck with us this far, thank you so much for watching this episode of The Skull Takers, a show where we interview world leader players who've been to tournaments. And today it's been Jamie and Brian from The Red Path, which has been awesome. And I've been Dara, who's also part of The Red Path. Um, if you want to support us more, you know, you can like and comment and, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. All the usual good stuff. It does help the algorithm and all that. And if you want more in-depth insight from us three here, then you can sign up to our Patreon where you gain access to a whole bunch of stuff. I'll leave you explore that yourself. And of course, come join the Discord where you can uh, annoy and pester all three of us as much as you want with your own world leader ideas. But don't at me about Terminators. You can at Brian now. That's going to be his job. And I'll I... leave you all there. So until the next one, folks, <laughs> stay healthy, stay safe, and kill Mame Burn. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>